Right, so today we're gonna work on just fixing some bugs and I'm in a public cafe right now, uh, hotel lobby slash cafe. But yeah, as soon as I try to run this, it basically just gives me an error and uh, that's what we're trying to do today. Alright, so so far it seems like the problem was quite simple. Uh, it seems like there's apparently certain uh, A-video like uh, emulators on Android Studio that don't come with the Google Play Store installed. Uh, so now I'm basically just creating another virtual or emulator uh, that I can use that has that Google Play icon thing. So hopefully this will work. Alright, <laughs> moment of truth. All right, so that's great, now it works, but I've spent like, I don't know, 30 minutes and this is just to get the app to run the way that it should already be able to run. Now I can get started with actually fixing bugs that were existing before, so it feels like anytime I fix something or anytime I think something's ready, there's always like another bug that comes up that I didn't even know about. So yeah, I, I hope I can get the beta version out very fast, but right now it feels like there's just gonna be bug after bug that I need to fix. So I'm not sure how I'll actually be able to fix all of those. <laughs> all right, so now it is 11 a.m. I came here at about like 8.30 and uh, now I can run the app the way that it runs at home. I've spent so many hours now, like not that many hours, but just too many hours trying to fix, just trying to get it to run the way that it actually runs at home. So it's like fixing bugs that should not need to be fix fixed. Uh, turns out I had to like generate a key store thing. I don't know what it is even, but it's like a fingerprint that you have to have, I guess, on your computer if you're using the, the app in like a debug mode. I think it's like a safety thing probably for Google. Uh, so that meant that I wasn't able to actually log in or use any of the Google sign-in method things. So, uh, but now I can. But it was an effort and a half, and uh, now I think it's time to probably go home and uh, continue working on there. All right, so once I got home, I basically decided to head to the gym straight away. And I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to show you the app in action, in an actual workout, and also show you what a typical workout for me will look like. If you pause quickly here, we can see that at the bottom, we have some grayed out numbers. And this is what I did last workout. And this is one of the key features of the app and what will allow you to very easily apply progressive overload to your workouts. And progressive overload simply means increasing one of these variables over time. And if you do that over time, you will get stronger and bigger. And so last workout, I did two reps and four sets at 100 kilos. I know that that was...
All right, so that's the workout done. And I wanted to touch on something that I've been doing lately at the gym, which is to use the time in between the sets to learn new things. And this is an idea that came to me from reading the book Atomic Habits. Essentially, when you're sitting in between the sets, you're usually not really doing anything. And sometimes I'm even looking for things to do. So I decided to start using this time instead. And I've been learning about algorithm fundamentals over on brilliant.org. And this works really well because Brilliant is really good at creating interactive and hands-on courses. So in between the sets, it's very convenient to go through a lesson and do a couple of the exercises. I've been neglecting algorithms for ages now, but I do think that it's a really valuable part of programming. Even if you don't necessarily need it to be able to code, I think there is real value in learning about them since it will help you with your problem solving and just code efficiency. Brilliant's course is something that I highly recommend that you try out. And since they are a long-term partner of me and this channel, you get a seven day free trial of Brilliant Premium using the link in my description. So you can test this course out for free to see what you think which I highly recommend that you do. Brilliant also has other courses as well, courses that will teach you everything from how to code with Python to neural networks and scientific thinking. I really can't recommend Brilliant enough and I'm proud to have them as a sponsor of this channel. And again, you get a seven day free trial of Brilliant Premium if you use the link in my description and the first 200 people will get a 20% discount on an entire year of Brilliant Premium. So go check it out at the link in the video description. All right, so uh, I'm back home now and it's the evening, but I thought I would just explain kind of what the bugs are in the app right now that I'm trying to work on. So one of the bugs is that when you start the app, you get this once you've logged in, which is something that I've done now. But I have one bug, which is that if I tap anywhere outside of this little window here, then the window basically disappears and it doesn't come back. So that means that you if you're running the app on the phone, you need to do this and then you need to delete it. Uh, the second problem is something that is not a problem here uh, on the computer, but I'll show you here on the screen uh, what it looks like on my phone. And that's when I've saved a bunch of workouts. The loading times take forever, which means that there's something going on there that I don't, I'm not really sure what that is, but it just takes way too long. And that's a real problem because it means that the app is not very functional right now. Uh, you can't really use it for a workout because as soon as you need to add a new exercise, you need to basically just put the phone down because it takes that long for it to load. So I'm not really sure if, I don't think that should be a Firebase problem because I know that lots of apps use Firebase. So it's probably a me problem, a problem of, of like me not knowing how to program it properly. So I need to take a look at that and just come up with a good way to store the data, maybe cache it somehow, uh, I'm not really sure. Another thing is that if we add an exercise here, uh, bench press, like so. And we do that, we can see that this uh, button here or this thing here that's just blue and green right now uh, that doesn't update it basically just stays the same so i need to press that to get it to update and i need that to update live so as soon as i change something here you can see that up here it actually changes but down here it doesn't change until i actually press uh, that button so that's one of the errors i need to fix not a big one because it doesn't really matter all that much but something that does matter is the fact that you can't really delete something. So if you accidentally add an exercise that you don't wanna, they realize that, okay, I'm not gonna do that exercise, then there's no way to like delete uh, the exercise. So that's something I need to fix as well. As you can see, we, we also get this thing here, the black and yellow stripey thing, which is a problem of like the, the size of the screen not being correct for the keyboard to work. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, we also have another thing, which is that if we add another exercise and then we want to type in, oh, it actually works here, but on my phone, this doesn't work. So what happens on my phone is that the keyboard actually covers the exercise. So you can't really see what you, where you're typing it in. And then you need to press like done to dismiss the keyboard. And then you can press again. Next thing that I also feel like I need to fix before I can release just a super early beta is that if we type in a really long name, 
then you can see that it just like basically pushes that button all the way to the side. So I need to find, come up with some sort of way to structure uh, the names. So those are some of the errors that I need to fix. Uh, there are also probably more things that I'll, I'll need to fix, but these are the ones that I'm aware of at this moment. And these are also quite big things, I think. I think these are things that I wouldn't be comfortable releasing. Like, I think you call it maybe an alpha. Maybe the alpha is before the beta. Maybe some of you guys can tell me, but I can't really release. I don't feel comfortable releasing something like that before I've fixed some of these things because this is just super annoying, especially like adding a new exercise. All right, and now we get another error. So yeah, there's just, there's things happening here that I need to fix and I'm not really sure uh, what all of them are. But that's uh, essentially what I was planning on doing today. Like I was going to just fix all of this stuff. But as you saw, uh, sometimes you just end up having to work on just getting it to run, which shouldn't even be something that you have to work on. But that's what happens when you program. Uh, but yeah, there's still a lot of stuff to be done uh, before I can actually release the beta. I was hoping that it would be a lot faster than this, but I guess these things take time.